Many thanks for staying with us. Well, it's time to take you to the social media world and see what's buzzing. And of course, Messi Manuel is right here with me. Hello, Messi. Hello, Good morning. Hello. It's a new Monday morning. Well, <laughs> it happens, you know. <laughs> so what's buzzing? So we'll just talk about elections first, then we'll move to other stories. Um, Bola Tinobu, the presidential candidate of the All Progressive Congress, APC, on Sunday said voters in Ekiti must deliver 95% of votes to him in 2023 election because he is their own. The former Lagos governor also urged the people to ignore his rivals, Atiku Abubaka of the People's Democratic Party and, P and Peter Obi of the Labour Party because you don't know them. In a push to secure the APC presidential ticket in, in June, Mr. Tinubu Sinali rose his Yoruba base to say it was a stun to become the Nigerian president, having helped the outgoing president, President Mamadou Buhari, to power twice. So um, I had your conversation earlier with mm. Mazi. Um, and I want to ask again, should election be based on tr on where you come tribe from, or tribe, ethnic. religion? Mm. Because um, Bola Ahmed Tinubu came the first time and said, it's my turn. <laughs> a milocon. Yeah, a milocon. So we don't understand what he meant by it's my, it's mm. my turn, although we read a lot of things um, on social media, like okay, it, like what I just read in the intro, mm. he helped President Mamadou Dubai to power twice, and because the Northerners have been in power for some years, mm. now it's time for the Southerners. But for Tinubu to come and say, Southerners does not mean it must be Yoruba. Mm -hmm. It can be someone from the Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. It can be someone from the East. But he said it boldly, Miloko, and now he's telling the kids people that you must vote they must. Must. Emphasis on the word yes, must. Yes, because I'm from your side. You know, it's quite alarming. The effrontery, the bold-faced effrontery of this presidential candidate. First, it was Atiku saying that uh, they don't, the North do not need an yeah. Igbo or Yoruba president, that they should vote for him. And now uh, we see... Bola Tinubu also coming out with such boldness that, uh, you know, they should give him 95% of their votes. It's really shocking that INEC is keeping mom in the midst of all of this because we know that this violates Section 97 of the Electoral Act, which says that, you know, any candidate that votes or brings down any other candidate uh, in the line of religion or ethnic col coloration is, uh, or is bound to pay 1 million, million naira or 12 months imprisonment. And if it's a party, 10 million naira. This law is in existence. Uh, you know, just like every other law in Nigeria, effectiveness implementation, implementation is usually the case. And now we're seeing this happen, him coming out to say this. Two presidential candidates of two major political parties coming out to make such statements, and INEC is just sitting back like nothing is happening. And these are leaders. These are leaders. Bola Ahmed was former governor of Lagos. He was a, a former senator. Atiku Abubakar was a former vice president. Mm -hmm. So they are leaders. As, oh, are our leaders law abiding? That's, that's one big question left to be answered. So because you're wondering, especially when you look at the fact that this is the campaigning season. season. The APC is even here to launch its uh, presidential campaign council. And we're seeing all of this going on. The fact that they don't even talk about the issues. They're not doing issue-based mm -hmm. campaigns. They're not talking about how to tackle insecurity. They're not talking about how to drop down the level of inflation, inflation the level of unemployment. They're not talking about how to ensure that ASU strikes do not recur the way it's going on. They're talking about, you know, mud slinging, throwing mm -hmm. jabs at one another. Look at the jabs going on between Atiku and uh, Tinubu. It's looking like these people are really taking us for granted. They are. Now, we'll just take some reaction at Savage Renew say, isn't this against INEC rule? Anyway, the only thing we are delivering to you is Kaseva Agbado <laughs> Ewa. <laughs> and at Saint says, Tinubu and Atiku will remain ethnic players. Igbo, Aosa, Yoruba, let's all vote wisely. Price of bag of rice does not know your tribe. Mm. Exactly. Quite Inflation explicit. does not know your tribe. Mm. Especially with this current flow. You even issue. go to the market and said and say, okay, um Igbo, please give me bag of rice for twenty thousand. Mm. No. You for won't get it. So we should just vote uh, wisely. I think that's just the Indeed. advice. Yes. So moving on, ex militant government, Tompolo um, Tantita Security Service, has discovered another illegal pipeline used by oil thief to siphon crude oil for export in Delta State. The most recent finding was reportedly made within a short distance from the Focados export terminal directly behind the military surveillance station. The pipeline owned by Nigeria Ajip Oil Company Limited had previously been abandoned by Exmobil.
before being reconnected by the oil thieves to loot crude oil in, into export tankers from a shell operated 48 inches export line. Waridi Enisuat, Mar Marine Intelligence Consultant for Tantita Security Service Limited, told journalists on Saturday that the illegal pipeline was connected to the 48 inches Transfocano's export truck line. So, Mobalan, this is not the first time we are reading this. Mm -hmm. Um, Tompolo's security outfit have been discovering um, several illegal pipelines. Although that's also questionable because a lot of people have asked several questions. That how come an ex-militant, someone who was even put on the blacklist exactly. of the EFCC for all of these crimes against the pipelines, is now the one watching over the pipelines. There are a lot of questions surrounding that, which the federal government is yet to answer. There are a lot of people saying that this has a lot of political undertones putting an ex-militant to, you know, as a surveillance yeah. project, giving him that four billion, uh, four billion yeah. naira monthly project to monitor the pipelines. But one major concern for me is that this particular pi pipeline is behind a military Secu surveillance. Yes. And you're wondering, really, what has the military been doing? So the thing is, they are not even eating. The previous um, illegal pipelines that we saw, it was they are, conspicuous. Yes, they are not eating. And this is, these are not things you will just sneak to do. Mm -hmm. These are engineering um, work. Like, once you are even um, doing the welding, you hear the sound. Of course. You, you heard what uh, Meli Kiari, the NNPC uh, GM, did say. He said it was professionally done. Yes. So it's not something that you maybe uh, try to Sneak. fix within one hour. It's something that will take several days and will take a lot of professionality or professionalism. And we hear all of this. It's like they are taking Nigerians as fools, playing on our intelligence, telling us that this was discovered by the Tantina, uh, whatever. And they, That's what <laughs> they can't discover it. And it's, it's looking, it's make it, um, to me, I think it's easier for them to discover. We have security um, um, personnel mm. surveying those axes. Mm. We have the Nava officers. Mm -hmm. And for how many years now? That's why Nigerians will tell. You know, so it's, some people will say that it's just like keeping a cat to watch over uh, meat, you know that it will be easy to discover because it, when you make a thief watch over your money, then that way you're already indicting the thief, so the thief would not want to fall your hand, as <laughs> so to speak. But if you look at all of these issues, for instance, the last one where the tanker was burnt, we've not heard anything. They said that they were going to investigate and get to the root of it. When are they going to get to the root yeah. of that? Because if you keep allowing people go scot free, commit heinous crimes and go scot-free, then you're telling others that we can also commit the crime and we would be free of any charges. So that way, it doesn't look like we're serious. And with all of these pipelines being discovered, doesn't mean that, okay, now our production output would increase because if the investigations do not get to the a logical end, then it was still back to square one. We're back to square one. They're the still siphoning the fuel. So, so if we're not getting to the end of it, we're not arresting people, we're not persecuting people, we're still back at square one. It's just a case of, okay, you're making these people try to justify the 4 billion naira. Is it 40 or 4 now? Mm -hmm. I can't remember. You're tr helping them justify the money you're paying them monthly. But in the end, we're not achieving any results. It's just like the NDDC probe where the Ponde, where he fainted. In the end, nothing came is, out of and it. And this is Nigeria, where snake will swallow money, termite to eat up money. But let's, eat, uh, let's take some reaction. Mm. At Stop Corruption, one says, with the discovery of dozens of illegal crude oil pipelines, do you still think that Nigeria is a country that is governed by honest and patriotic citizens? It is very depressing to be a Nigerian in Nigeria. And if Nigeria is a religion country, uh, religious country, I'll stop trusting and believing in it. This person is saying if Nigeria is a religion, he will stop um, trusting and believing in it. I think he, he already gave up. Then as <laughs> Ola Rewaji says, and Shell will say that they are not aware, cut the case. Don't bother keep playing the script. Election is at the corner. We all know how both APC and PDP government, they run arm. Then at 80, 85 odd um, says, my brother, you discover something that is hidden. This pipeline is a plain sight. Who is fooling who here? Hmm. So the pipelines are not eating. Mm -hmm. And some Nigerians are saying this thing is just scripted. You're just, you're just acting the script out. Mm.
because he, he still has a case. That's some problem. So he still has a case. And you recover, it caused some form of dispute between his faction and that of, uh, what's his name now? I can't remember his name. The other militants. Militant, uh, it caused some issues amongst them. We saw them also saying, you know, well, it's in our region. We should also be given that kind of contract yeah. to protect. So it's Benjamin speaking. <laughs> but the major news in this is um, this, this illegal pipeline, this present one, and the latest one, the, the oil thief gets the, the finest of our oil, according to reports. Mm. It's already processed, mm. the finest. So I just want to, uh, at the end of the day, I want to say, okay, if you can just, if this, you can just get this thing right, all this money can solve most of our problems. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of, of school strike. children, um, out, uh, ASU strike, a lot, of, uh, a lot of issues in the country. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, maybe Nigerians will stop jackpine. Well, maybe, because there are myriad challenges in, in the country, especially when it comes to oil theft. And we've heard several experts talk about the fact that we're losing a lot of our revenue to this oil theft. But let's wrap it up now with the quote of the day. And uh, that is a quote right here uh, coming from Marian, Mother Teresa, rather, Mother Teresa. She says, spread love everywhere you go i think that's self-explanatory spread yes. love everywhere you go yes. everyone can do with a little love because nigeria is really not smiling everyone needs that that little bit of love that smile that cheerfulness especially when you are able to give it spread the love show the love and keep loving <laughs> All right, this is all we're wrapping up today. Thank you so much for being a part of the show. My name is Omobolanli Adeshui, wishing you a fantastic day. And I'm Mercy Mane. Have a productive day.